So I'm making a lateral extension straight bar shoe. I haven't marked centre on my seal, but I've cooled it down roughly, give or take, it's in the centre. I'm just going to jump up the outside. I've got 15 inches of uh, inch by 5 16. And I'm just going to jump up the outside. When you're making shoes, and when you make a lot of shoes, like I do, I love making shoes, and you get to learn how much seal you jump into a shoe in one heat. If I've got a long heat like this, I know in one heat, I'll jump about an inch into it. It's only a thin section, this. If it was a thicker section, I know that I'd probably jump inch and a quarter into it. With it being a thin section, it tends to bend and twist, and you spend a lot of time straightening out the twist. See, every time it buckles, you've got to forge those little, uh, little bends out. So that should now be 14 and a half. Yep, yeah, spot on, 14 and a half inches. So that's one heat. I know that I've jumped uh, an inch into that. So after we're 15 and a half, because I make a lot of shoes, I know that in one heat, I'm going to jump an inch into it. So it's made my life a bit easier. Uh, all I'm going to, that's obviously my outside branch. I'll bend my toe, leave it blank. I've got, I've got a centre mark on any side of it. But I know roughly, my centre's roughly about there. I bet if I measured it, that'd be pretty much spot on. So I'm just going to bend that, and that'll be my toe bend. Then I'm going to hockey stick the outside and back it up. Seven and a quarter. Oh, just off by an eighth of an inch. That'll be about right there. Keep it nice and clean. So we're going to do a little toe bend in there. Just move the, the shoe up and down the anvil. Keep my hammer in the same place. And I'm just going to move the shoe up and down. So I'll have a glance at that now, put it on the anvil, that's pretty symmetrical, just needs to be a little bit tighter, so I'll just forge it round, tiny a little bit more. That's a nice little toe bend there. Sometimes when you're working out the gas fire, you pull your shoe out the fire, and uh, you brush it, but you can still see, you can visibly see the scale hasn't come off. But when you start forging a shoe, the, sh the shoe bends and the scale flakes off. So, even if you can't get a scale off to start with, before you level it, just give it a quick brush and keep it nice and clean. The thing I'm going to do with this now is uh, put a hockey stick on it. So I'm going to go over to the, the narrow end of the, uh, the bick again. I'm going to have it at 90 degrees for the bick. So the, the bick's at that angle and my shoe will be a perfect 90 degrees. I'm going to forge over roughly that much, which is two and a quarter inches which is about 56 millimetres. So I'm just going to forge it like that till it goes to an, ang an angle of around about just under 90 degrees. And I'm going to put it on the anvil like that and back it up. So I want a nice sharp corner on the outside edge. Any shoe you're welding, try and keep it as clean as you can, especially in the area that you are welding. So brush it before you hit it. So I've got around about two and a quarter inches over the, the bit there. And I'm forging it so it's an angle just under 90 degrees. And I'll keep the, the branch of the shoe on the anvil and I'll forge that down until I get a sharp corner there. So I've backed it up there, I've got a reasonable corner on there, it's good enough at the moment. Uh, with backing it up, backing up that process there, backing it up's made that steel swell out a little bit, so it's a little bit fatter. I'm going to leave that, that thickness in there, because it gives me a little bit more tolerance when I come to weld my shoe. It means I can afford to dent the shoe as I'm welding it, and know that I've got enough steel in there that I can forge it out when I need to. So it started off as five, uh, five sixteenths of thickness, which I think is eight millimetres. It's now up to about nine or nearly ten millimetres. So we're just forging it nicely around the bick until we get the shape that we want.
I wouldn't normally brush a shoe just before it goes back in the fire because it's pointless, but just brushing it so I'm showing you what, what we've got there. So that half of the shoe is quite nice there. It's, there's your centre of your frog plate and that lines up nicely with where your toe clip potentially is going to end up. So I'll do the same on the inside branch. All I'll do is I'll maybe just run that up a little bit first because it's the inside branch uh, on a lateral extension so you want a definition between the inside and the outside. Um, that inside outside branch will end up as probably inch and a quarter thick because when it comes to it I'll box it off and it'll bro broaden out that section there. So I'll do in one heat, I'll hockey stick that and bend the branch and get that ready to weld. So I'm just going to run this inside branch. I'll just run it up a little bit just to narrow it up so there's a, a good definition between the inside and the outside. Do my hockey stick. Just a touch more than that. it up. Everyone's got different methods of scarfing. I just find this method I use the quickest and easiest. So the shoe's going fairly cold but all I'm doing is spinning a branch around so there's plenty of heat for that. And I always make sure my uh, uh, the second branch of Ben goes underneath of the first branch so I'm not that down. And then it just means I've got a little system then. It means I always know that um, when my shoe comes out for welding, I start on that side and then start on that side. It's always the same. So I always do the same system every time I make a shoe. So it's just, uh, it's not quite ready for welding yet. It just wants setting up a little bit. But what I have done is I've intentionally left that wider and that wider by uh, when I've hockey sticked it around, it's made my section a little bit thicker. So it means that when I'm scarfing it, I can afford to dent. I can afford to be uh, forging that scarf in there. And I can afford to dent that surface there, knowing that I've got enough tolerance that I can forge it out afterwards. So I'll put it back in the fire and get a nice uh, scarfing up heat. So we're only scarfing it up, so it doesn't have to be too hot, but it's very important just to give it a good old brush at this, this heat. I'm going to just invert both of my bars slightly. So I've got my, uh, just a touch more. So the actual back of the, uh, the bar goes in and out, call it inverted. And I've just got to narrow the shoe up a touch. Setting your, your welds up is probably more important than welding. If you get your, your bar set up nicely to start with, it just makes your welding so much more simple at the end. So that's how I do it, I just taper it down with the, the toe of my hammer there. So it's just tapered down nicely, so it's tapered down to nothing there, and then I'll flux that up and just tap it in nicely like that just to uh, get rid of that scarf. Same on that side, it's tapered down nicely and it just means when it comes out of the fire I can just pull it together and just forge those scarves in. Flux it up, I always flux up all four surfaces. I just think it stops a bit of the the scale that you get from gas forging in particular stops the scale getting in between your steel so even though in this heat here all I'm going to do is weld that surface that surface and then go on to the bic and weld that surface I'll still flux up all four make sure everything's ready straight on the anvil flat face of the hammer forge these scarves in nicely you can afford to dent the back of the bar there because you're giving yourself that tolerance that when you back the, uh, the hockey sticks up you can uh, you didn't thin it back down to the eight mil. You left it as nine or ten, so you can afford to dent it. When I'm forging the back of this uh, this bar, and I just move the shoe from side to side on the anvil there. So I do a few hits there, move it about, and just keep moving from side to side, and keep everything nice and even. And I'm putting loads of little dents in there, but I'm putting them in with the heel of the hammer, which is forging these scarves in. So it's really nicely welded now. But look, I've got maybe I don't know how many millimeters of steel there, loads and loads of steel there. So it doesn't matter if I dent it. I've got. Probably about 18, 20 millimetres, there we go. 20 millimetres of steel there now. So I can afford to put loads of dents in it and know that I've got plenty of tolerance to forge them out at the end. The next bit I'm going to weld up 
it's just the inside of this bar here you see because it's a uh, lateral extension the outside branch is a lot thicker than the wider that way than the inside branch so you get a little bit of a difficult weld there but it's not that bad all i'm going to do is uh, get some get it in the fire get it fluxed up bring it out forge that down like that and forge it on the bick so i'm going to put the bick of the anvil onto the chute hit it there and the anvil will forge that up nicely do the same on the other side put the bick of the anvil there and that's as you can see on that side it'll forge that little nipple in there and there nicely very easy but once again flux up all four surfaces keep them all clean don't let any uh, gas scale get in in between your welds so we just get this frog plate forged in there that's fire welded in there nicely onto the bit like i said forge that up other side forge that up and now I'll forge out that thickness, you know, that tolerance that I left myself. So my bar's still inverted slightly, and as I forge it down, I keep turning it just to, so I can check on it all the time. But you see, before I flattened it, it was quite inverted. I'm flattening out that weld there. Let's push the bar back out straight now. Whereas if I'd welded it with a straight bar to start with, it would have gone almost egg bar shaped when I flattened up that, uh, that weld there. So that's quite a nice, neat little weld. There, so that's my lateral extension so far uh, it's not quite balanced it's just out in the toe so the center mark, center mark will be about there uh, looking at it that branch there just drops away a little bit so it goes down too far you know corresponding to that side so i'm going to bring the shoe around a little bit just to correct that i'll just put it on the bit there forge that round so that'll take that straightness out there and then I'll, that'll knock it so it's a bit further up on that in, uh, outside edge and i'll just move the whole outside branch around like that and then it'll be symmetrical and balanced and then uh, I'll fuller the outside and plain stamp the inside see how we get on now you see that that shape's quite bad at the moment sort that out before you mark any nail holes or fullering always make sure your shoe's balanced if you start with a, an unbalanced shoe you generally end up getting your, your nail holes and your fullering in the wrong place so get it balanced up properly first that looks all right to me get the back of your bar parallel with the uh, edge of the anvil utilize all the straight edges you can find when you're shoemaking so if the back of the bars are parallel with the edge of the anvil and the ruler is parallel with the front edge of the anvil as long as your shoes balance you guarantee that you're Fuller and the nail holes are going to be in the same in the right place. So lateral extension, I'm going to start reasonably fine on the at the toe and just get a little bit more coarse as you go around the shoe. So I'll start, I'll exaggerate it, but I'm going to start fullering there. And as I get round, I'm going to go more and more and more coarse. So I end up fullering down to about that point there. I'll probably taper it out as well in the toe. So that's the fullering stop there. Uh, I'll just mark where my nail holes are going. That's it, back in the fire. So I'll do that outside branch, fuller it, nail hole it, and box it off in that one heat, and then do the same on the other. So I'll keep it clean. Normally, when you're fullering, you put a fullering edge on, but because we're doing uh, a lateral extension, the shoes uh, doesn't need a fullering edge on because you're fullering more coarse, so the, uh, the fuller's not going to push the steel out. It's not going to make your section significantly wider. So I've started fine, I've gone more and more coarse towards the heel, and then I put a full stop in it. And I'm going to just tape it out. Now 
you it'll level up. That's where my fuller would have stopped, or where it started, sorry. So I'll put my first nail hole just a touch further back. Lateral extensions, funny things really, you don't generally need too much pitch on a lateral extension. There's, as a general rule of thumb, you'll be putting a lateral extension on a, an upright hoof, you know, the lateral side of the hoof would be more upright than the medial side. So you don't necessarily need anywhere near as much pitch on it. Now put the boxing on. You keep your head out of the way a little bit when you're boxing uh, thin sections like this because if you miss it, it's going to bounce straight back up into you. Normally when I was boxing, I'd be have my head over here, but it's a thin section. Just keep my head back a little bit. With every shoe, every time you hit a shoe, your hammer alters the section, it alters the shape of your fuller in, your nail holes and everything. So as soon as you start boxing a shoe like that, you've got to fuller it, nail hole it, pritchel it again. That's nothing will work properly. So that's the outside branch done there. Looks pretty tidy, I'll just plain stamp the inside and uh, maybe stick a clip on it. So I always have, uh, when I'm plain stamping, just an old stamp. This is my starter stamp, it's just a, an old stamp or sometimes when I'm making them they're not quite right. So I just get an old stamp and use that as a starter stamp and then it just means that I've always got my plain stamp that I know is perfect and when I make them I check them and test them and I know they're right so I want to look after it and make sure that I don't distort it by knocking it into uh, steel constantly so I've just got that little plain stamp that starts the uh, shape of the nail roll off and my normal stamp just to finish them off So there's my shoe, I'll just put it in for a toe clip heat now. Just pop a little uh, hammer clip on it, and that's it, finished. So this will be my last heat on this little hammer finished bar shoe. I always find that when I'm making shoes for competitions, or even when I'm making shoes at home, it's good practice to br always brush the ground bearing surface first, because when a judge is looking at a shoe, the first thing he does is picks the shoe up and he looks at the ground bearing for surface first. So just get into the habit of cleaning your the sur ground bearing surface first while it's hottest, because it's easier to brush a shoe when it's hot. As soon as it starts cooling down, it gets to be more difficult. More difficult to get that scale off.
So that's my lateral extension bar shoe. Pretty simple. I think they're quite a nice little shoe to make, a nice uh, forging exercise, but practical if you need them to be.